Okay, so I've been through the dark night of the soul. It lasted many years for me, unfortunately. Although it's both unfortunate and fortunate because it allowed me to grow a lot and to see things I would not have seen otherwise. So this video is an update on how to get through this dark night of the soul because I now have greater perspective on that process. I recorded a previous video a few years ago, so this is an update for that. And I'll cover five main things that helped me survive the dark night. So let's start with number one, which is awareness. And it's the ability to not take my thoughts so seriously. Because in the dark night, I had many thoughts ranging from dark to darker and even suicidal ideation. And I was able to not believe every thought I had, so to not identify with every idea, image, sound, feeling, and to believe that it was me, that I had to do something about it. I was simply aware of the thoughts. Now this still meant that I felt the thoughts. So if I had a thought that said that life is meaningless, there's no use in doing anything, nothing holds meaning, value, purpose, I don't have a passion or a purpose to live. All of those were symptoms of the darkness and the crumbling that was going on in the dark night of the soul. And since I had those thoughts, I felt them, especially since I believed them. And in the beginning, I would resist those thoughts. I would try to argue against myself, you could say. And as time went by, I simply let them be, let those thoughts be. It's kind of like ignoring, but not completely ignoring, because I'm acknowledging that they're there, but I'm at the same time not trying to do anything about them. I'm not trying to resist or change or argue with them. So the first thing is awareness. Awareness that thoughts come and go, emotions change all the time, and we don't have to believe every thought we have, every idea, everything that goes through our head or our body. And the next step is the ability to face your demons. So a thought enters, maybe the, the thought is about, or the thought says that life is meaningless, that leads to an emotion, you feel bad, you feel down, you feel like you don't have any value because you have that thought, you have that story running that life is meaningless, so you feel meaningless and maybe even worthless. So when this happens, for me it was about not reacting to that, simply watching it. And this is the ability to face your demons. Because facing your demons means having those thoughts come up and not trying to push them away, but simply seeing that they don't really hold any power over you. Yes, they may, it may feel bad to experience them, but we also have these ideas and concepts about what we should feel, what we shouldn't feel, what we should strive to feel. And... After a while, I realized that it's okay for the darkness to enter, because in the dark night, your identity is crumbling and changing. So many of these old ideas and beliefs come up to the surface, and you get to see if they hold value or not. So sometimes I explored these thoughts and ideas and concepts, and sometimes I simply watched them because they kept repeating themselves. It's, it was the same story coming up over and over again. 
like I talk about in my other videos, we all have themes in our lives that we go through. Some people explore the theme of confidence and not confidence. Some people explore being competent and not competent. And others have loving and not loving. So all these different themes that we go through. And I went through the dark night alone. And in a way, life was my teacher because I listened to what resonated with me, what kept pulling me toward it. And not everyone can do this alone. Not everyone should. So if you can't, there's nothing wrong with that. You simply do what you can with what you have and listen to your inner guidance. So to wrap up this point on facing your demons, your struggle is what you're learning. It's your opportunity. So if you feel like you have no friends and you're all alone, then that is your opportunity to learn about independence and looking within yourself. And in a way, learning to love yourself because if you want others to validate us, we're looking for that validation from the outside. Now, obviously, as human beings, we need that. But during this period, it's about looking within yourself. So that brings us to the third point that helped me, which was to listen to my inner guidance system, my inner GPS, as I've been calling it for a long time now. And it's about following what resonates with me. So I mentioned that life was my teacher. And it happened through me simply noticing what was interesting to me. So I might, might have felt interested in watching a certain movie, picking up a certain book, or listening to a podcast, or just searching something online and finding something that truly resonated with me. And for you, it's about discovering how that, how that resonance shows up. So maybe your body lights up about something. Maybe it feels magnetic. Maybe it feels alive. Because even in the dark night, while it felt like all hope was lost for me, I still had moments of being in touch with my inner GPS, my inner wisdom, and noticing what was interesting. So it's always there. It's just that in the, in the dark night, we have the darkness dialed up and everything seems dark, but there's still a small candle there. You're holding a candle. And while the darkness is ominous and everywhere, the candle still lights the way, even though it's a small light. It's still there, it's still burning, and it's always burning. So inner guidance, it doesn't always make sense, and I've learned to trust that. I've been following my inner guidance since 2002, probably, and so it's I've had time to learn to trust it, even though it doesn't make sense. And in a way, it doesn't have to make sense, because... I'm here to enjoy what I'm doing. So I follow my interests, I follow what's magnetic, and that leads to enjoyment. It doesn't exclude struggle and struggle and adversity and challenge, but there's always a, an element of enjoyment there, an element of, I don't know, feeling like it's correct in a way. So it doesn't always make sense. And The Dark Knight is about learning that you can't force your way to live life according to other people's ideas. That's why everything is crumbling around you. All these ideas and ways of identifying yourself, they disappear. And so you feel like you have nothing to hold on to. You feel meaningless because that meaninglessness helps you see through these old ideas, the old conditioning. And that helps you 
discover your own truth. And that's your inner guidance system. So that's what I did. Just notice what's interesting. And that led me forward. And that brings us to our fourth point, which is finding your enjoyment. Now, I'm not sure if I said in the beginning that I'd cover five points, but I'm going to cover six points. So finding your enjoyment, we get bogged down, as I mentioned, with all these ideas and conditioning about how life should be, what we must do, what we have to do in order to get somewhere that promises to give us something that we think we need. But the dark night helps you resolve that because everything crumbles and you see that there's no point in trying to strive for anything because it's right here. The enjoyment is right here, following your interests, following what feels magnetic, seeing the truth about things not really leading anywhere. Sure, we can have goals, but those are secondary to finding the enjoyment in this moment. Living life right here, right now. And finding those things that make you come alive, like music, art, playing, writing, reading, walking in nature, whatever you enjoy. So we've learned to suppress all that and then to get on with life, to make progress, to be productive. And so now you have the opportunity to find your enjoyment, to see what truly makes you come alive. Even as the darkness comes closer around you and you feel down on many days, there's still something within you calling you in a certain direction. So it's up to you to listen to that and learn to listen to it. And so the fourth point, finding your enjoyment. The fifth point is stumbling forward because this is difficult. This was one of the hardest things that I had to go through in my life psychologically. So use what resonates to survive. Listening to music, reading books, watching movies, taking walks, talking to friends, talking to someone else, a professional, whatever it is, just stumble forward because that's all we can do during this time. That's all I could do. I didn't know when it would end. I wished it would end sooner. But now looking back, I'm glad I went through it. So you simply do your best, stay in the present moment, because even that thinking about when will this end? I can't take this anymore. That's a thought, an idea, an image coming into your head and then you feel that. So these, the thoughts we have, the emotions, are middlemen to reality. It's not reality that we feel these things. So stumbling forward is all we can do doing our best with what we have, where we are. We'll have ideas about where we should be, how life should look. But life is right here, right now, showing you that you need to focus on going through this, surviving this in a way. And the last step is what you've heard all your life, but it made a big difference for me, and that is taking care of your health. Because when we feel bad, when we go through the darkness, we want to numb ourselves with food, with excessive movies, TV series, whatever it is. And we don't want to exercise or do any of, the, any of the things we know would be good for us. So... I found it very helpful to just eat as much fruits and vegetables as I could. Healthy food in general, plant-based fruits, vegetables, and also exercise, even if it's just one minute a day, just to get started with something. And I remember 
the darkest times because I really didn't want to do anything. All I wanted to do was avoid what I was going through. And as I kept doing that, I, I noticed that it just kept making things worse. So in a way I had to force myself, but it wasn't forcing. It was more getting in touch with the deep down resonance of my body and noticing what my body wanted to do because there was a lot of darkness and it was hard to do anything because it felt like I was in sludge going through life but still it helped to exercise, eat well, drink plenty of water and do what I could for my body and health because eating well helps your brain, helps your body and that helps you get through this so, six points, awareness, facing your demons, your inner guidance system, finding your enjoyment, stumbling forward, and taking care of your health. Really common sense tips, but applying them in the moment is difficult, and I couldn't always do it. So, we're just stumbling forward and... You will get through this, just do your best and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. I have a whole playlist on the dark night of the soul, the lessons I learned, what it is and you can check those out for more goodness. So I'll see you in the next one.